Okay, we're going to talk about getting into teaching English online. This is not TESOL in the class sense where I'm standing with a classroom full of people. This is one-to-one -one lessons. This is YouTube stuff. This is uh, doing a blog. This is the bits and pieces online that can actually help with the revenue, but also you don't need to commit so much to it. The two people we've got here is this is somebody who's coming up for retirement or thinking I want to quit work and go to the Philippines or whatever. He's not doing it today. He wants one to two years to go through that transition period. This is somebody else that sat on the beach over here. Um, he went out and spent all his money. He spent the last six months out in the Philippines and now needs to be making money. So he wants some answers now. So those are two people, but this could be you. You don't have to be broke and sitting on the beach. You could be, oh, well, I'm working on something else, but I could be doing this in the evenings. You know, doesn't hurt. So we'll start with these guys, the guys that are looking at doing it long term. You're going to start building a brand. Now, let me get a red pen. First thing you want to do is start your own YouTube channel. That You can start that today. Um, now, I recommend you only put about two hours a week in because you don't want to interfere with your normal life at the moment because this is coming up, you're building up to this. So doing a YouTube channel may seem, oh, well, that's no problem. Try and come up with topics every week because that will start getting the old grey matter going on how to make something interesting. Um, so I'd, I'd say do like a five minute max video ideally they want to be under two and a half minutes for youtube and doing one every week or a couple of months remember you're not making money off this you're not trying to at the beginning you're making that transition into teaching online because what you're going to start doing is building up how are you going to do it um this will make more sense now i'll, I'll explain this today i've started with things like synonyms. Now, synonyms and uh, verbs, uh, what do they call? Uh, gerunds, verbing, uh, verbs are ing, gerunds, that sort of stuff. I don't like teaching over and over again. So, if I've got a new student that's come in and says, I don't know what that means, I don't like going over and over the same thing. So, that's where the, those things will end up in my YouTube channel. Um, like, um, homophones etc etc they're broken down so the student can go I'll go and have a look at that because I, I, I know Matt's already done a video on it he's explained it to me before but I forgot I can go to the YouTube channel and look at that so that is not only for um, building some videos up for YouTube it's a very useful class tool because you can just keep referring people to it because the information is already there you you can uh, build it up over time like a library in the same way you can use my videos if you want <laughs> because that's that's the whole idea of this this is why the big idea um, about having a site where everybody's teaching because ideally everybody crosses over with each other to try and help each other so you start building a YouTube brand um, getting recognized on YouTube people start making contact with you saying I really liked the way you taught that I understood it really well can you teach me? Now, you may actually turn around and say, well, I'm not really any good at this yet. I haven't actually practiced. So you might say, um, not at the moment, but I can recommend Joe Blogs, my friend, and you may refer him for now. Because what you're trying to do is just build things up. It all depends on how you're looking to do this in the next one to two years. If you're looking at doing five students yourself, uh, for example, I have a, a a woman in Vietnam at the, the moment. She has gone from 1.5 hours a week to 4.5 because she's happy with the way she's learning. That is building up slowly for me. Um, that's I'm quite happy with that. And the fact that she's actually turned around and said, I want three lessons a week now, actually turns around and says to me, I'm doing it right. But you need to work up to that, which is why... YouTube videos actually help you get the grey matter going to say, what do I need to be doing? Um, the blog, tie that in with the YouTube. The reason being is although you do things like synonyms and everything else, it's a lot 
to absorb in one go. So when you do your blog, it breaks it down to people. They understand it a bit more because they can see it in text and they can spend a bit of time trying to understand it. But also maybe you can help with the pronunciation with certain things by putting the, the phonics and things like that in there, making it easy for people. The easier it is, the more people are going to be interested. That then feeds your YouTube videos because you can then link them to that. It says, go and watch my video on phonics, for example. But if somebody's watching the phonics video, they can go through to your blog and say, go and have a look at the quiz that I've made. In the same way, you've got your Facebook here where you can feed your YouTube over to Facebook. And in, that, in your Facebook, what you're looking to do is engage with people on a regular basis and build a bit of a brand there. The battle between Google and Facebook sort of makes them almost like a two search engines down the middle. So if you can get them working together, you know, Facebook and YouTube, because bear in mind, when I say Google, YouTube is owned by Google. Facebook are now pushing their own video systems, which doesn't benefit you currently, because there's no revenue for you on it. Um, but you can feed your YouTube videos in there. But uploading to Facebook, short videos ex for explaining, for example, I teach one-to-one -one lessons on my English teacher, blah, 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 something short like that, upload it into Facebook because you may pick up some students that way. But if you're not looking at doing it now, with one to two years, don't upload that video yet. <laughs> then there's the website. Now, I recommend using our website. But Matt, you would. Um, the reason being is in one to two years time, our website's been up one to two years. You make the money off the students anyway. I'm not taking your money for the students. Um, you, when, the, when your videos and everything go up into our website, you get that revenue when students go and watch it. When teachers turn around and recommend viewing your videos, you get the revenue. Obviously, we're not connected to your Facebook. We're connected to our Facebook. But you and your YouTube channel can actually use ours. So you can actually advertise your YouTube channel on our Facebook uh, channel where we're proactively building the website up. Why am I so crazy to do that? Why am I helping you? Well, the answer is I'm only one teacher. I'm not the guy on the island here. Currently I am. I'm sat on this island on my own. And as an island, I don't stand out too well. But if I've got a teacher here, 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 and we're all interlinked, what suddenly happens is our activity on the internet starts to push the website up. Once the website goes up, your activity increases on your YouTube, it increases on my YouTube, the website increases, and with the website we have this separate course and stuff we've discussed before. But you could actually even write your own courses and put them on the website tomorrow. Why would you do that? Because you don't need to be doing anything after it. You're not offering one-to-one -one lessons. You could even recommend somebody else to do the one-to-one -one lessons that you know and are very good at teaching. Now, that's where you're heading. Now, this is where all this effort becomes worthwhile. Because as you're collecting all the information, you're collecting emails, you're collecting contacts, you're collecting students. <clears throat> that long list of emails, etc. You can email Jane that you taught, uh, spoke to two years ago online, and you've been sending her word of the day, etc. And say, I've, I've started teaching lessons now. Are you interested? And she may go, No, I, I've used Matt now, but nice anyway. But my niece needs somebody. And that's why these are important, because you don't know how things are interwoven. You don't know what emails and contacts are going to be of high usage to you, which is why you gather them as you go, because you can send out regular emails, and I'll show you how to do that later. Um, but the main thing is you're gathering contacts all the time. This is why you collect all this, because when you get to here, which is one or two years later, we'll call this now, You've got a long list of people that have some form of English teaching they want. 
they're either going to want um, one-to-one -one lessons, um, specific things relating to medical or law, etc. That that can happen, but it all comes from gathering the email and contacts. Now we're on to now. <clears throat> now is where I currently am because. I'm still waiting on some contracts for the UK. I've got other stuff coming through the door, but it's a bit slow. Um, so I want to increase my revenue. So what I have as a now is I started doing YouTube videos myself. What, how many were done? The answer is five. That's not a lot, Matt. No, because the thing is I'm still working on the format. This is why even here you turn around and spend time on it because you want to get the same format and then keep it consistent. Um, because once it starts flowing, it all becomes a pattern. This is the process of learning is a process. Process of teaching is teaching people that are learning from your process. So keeping it all the same is very, very important because it's your brand, it's you. So this is why I've got five videos and they're structured, structured in things like um, the bits that I don't want to constantly repeat like gerunds and blah 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 because I want students on any of my documentation for example will get a little web link so they turn around and go oh, I don't understand this because of the because this is the majority of my stuff's online anyway they can actually pause the video and then go and have a look at the web link understand what what a gerund is then go back to what they were actually studying when I sent them a video. Um, because what you're trying to get away from is being the guy sat there constantly going, right, let's watch the video together. Okay, because that's costing them money. That's costing them a lot of money. It, some of the English teachers are charging $50 an hour. So you have to bear in mind that you have to be of high value. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to, the guys that sit there, and we'll watch a video with somebody else. People will grumble even at $3 an hour. So what you want to do is actually make sure your lessons are worth their money. This is why what I do is I'll go, right, um, Tasha, for the next lesson, I need you to go and watch this YouTube video, learn a bit about it, come back to me um, with some notes and something next lesson. And we'll discuss it and go through what actually happened in the video. Because she won't need to watch it unless she actually watches it want it or needs to watch it with me. Because if she fully understands it, it sort of defeats the object. You don't need to. She could watch that on her own and save herself some money. Um, because what I'm interested in is teaching English, not watching movies with people. Um, the website is obviously linked to the YouTube, but also this is my brand. This is me. The website is also where we're all going to be integrated. This is where I want everybody to be. This is why the website's important. Why use my website and not your own? It gets back to the island. Um, this has just as much benefit to me as it does to you. Because a lot of this stuff here ties in with this. Because if I know you and you, um, we've gone through some of the mentoring stuff and gone through, oh, let's have some a couple of lessons, see how you get on. See, how you, see if you're actually teaching all right. Because I know you've been doing it for one to two years with your plan, but have you taught a lesson yet? No. So what do you do when a Vietnamese kid sits there and just stares at you? Um, because the mother's in the background going, the, kid, the kid's there like, and you go, how, how are you? And the mother is, is going, he's saying, how are you? In, in Vietnamese and they go tell him you are fine I'm fine like that how do you deal with that <laughs> um, these are the sort of things these are real-world situations um, because you do come across things like that and understanding how to deal with it is important which is why I want to get a teacher area going on the website because I don't want this stuff being public on the website if you're a teacher on it it will be in the background uh, it's a, it'll be a sub-site inside the website for teacher, teachers and tutors. The other thing, if you're teaching now, is the schools. 
Um, there's a lot of online schools looking for teachers. Um, if you contact me, I can give you some. Matt, you're going to commission? No, I'm not. Um, I actually have some people that will push you students every week and they'll turn around and go, okay, this is um, Fish One or whatever. She's eight years old and she wants to talk about what X, Y, Z. And then you have to form the class and everything, the, uh, the program for the students. But it's a good real world experience. The first lessons are free. So you'll have to give up about 30 minutes of your own time for every lesson, which does eat up a bit of time getting through some students. Because the problems I found with a lot of them is a lot of them are not actually wanting to be students. They want a free English lesson. Um, because obviously it's being pushed by the schools as a free English lesson, not being pushed as a trial lesson to see if you enjoy teaching English, which is a waste of my time sometimes. But that's why initially it's a pain, but that's why I've got that student that is now doing four and a half hours a week. With, and that's one student. Um, there is other students that I deal with, but they have less budget. So, um, But that's why it takes time. Um, now, what do you expect online, cash-wise, today? If you're not even Tesla, you're looking at $10, $10 an hour. Um, if you're a Filipino, They're paying about three dollars to four dollars. That's racist. Uh, nothing to do with me. Speak to the guys in Asia because it's what they're paying. Um, obviously, if you're good, you push it up yourself. Um, myself, I'd be looking to increase that by increasing the quality of the teaching because obviously my accent, etc., is better than a lot of the people that are three dollars an hour, which is why I currently get ten. But in Europe, it's actually, I can't do the euro sign, so I'm not going to try. You can get up to 20, 20 euros. Now, Middle East and your, uh, South Korea, you could get up to $50 if you set it up right. But to get to that sort of money, you need to be knowing what you're doing and being able to sell yourself really well. I would say start... With the three and the tens, you're not going to get three anyway. You'll be above that if you're a native speaker, um, unless you're from the Philippines. And the reason this struggles with the Philippines is there's a lot of them. Um, a lot of Filipinos do this. So the race to zero is that freelancer thing where you get the website. We go, right, I do web design. I'm really good at it, but I cost £2,000 a month. Guy in India comes in and says, I'll do the whole project for a hundred dollars. And you sat there going, How am I supposed to compete with that? But also I know the quality ain't gonna be right. But people will still go with that. What you need to do is build up. Like I said you'll start on ten, but Filipinos start at three. But I'm not saying you should accept ten and three. I'm saying when you start, take that for the first month or so and then work from it because you're building up your YouTube, your websites, your schools and on your YouTube you can advertise one to one teaching so you can actually pull that yourself and the website will advertise you as one to one anyway and people will contact you direct. Schools are at this is the rates they give but there's nothing to stop you actually getting more money yourself. The only reason I said this is on here is because you're talking now. You want to be making money this week. Getting rich on the, the English teaching school, uh, websites, you can do that now. As such, they can start feeding you through students by Friday. And when you do an online profile, uh, let's grab this out. When you do an online profile, a couple of tips. You're gonna to need to do video. Now, some of them will let you use your YouTube video. And I highly recommend it because people have got access to all your other videos if you do that. 
Next one is audio. You gotta remember you've got telephone learners sometimes. A lot of the guys I've spoken to in Vietnam are not on even smartphones, they're just on telephones. Um, so they have audio lessons. So with that, you've got to use something like um, Audacity. I think people, some people call it Audio City or whatever. It's Audacity. That will do your recording. Um, Camtasia will do it. Windows Movie Maker will do it. Just don't save the vi just separate the audio from the video. There's other software out there that will rip. You know, if you don't know how to separate it, send me the video. I'll do it. Um, throw it in a Dropbox. I'll download it. Split the two and send you it back. Can't say fairer than that, can I? For free. Um, so, profile pick. Have a look at what other people's profiles are on these schools, and you'll see which ones are doing rather well. It's all to do with how they present themselves. It's a bit like LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn, I find a little strange these days because people have um, profiles of grandeur. <laughs> um, you have directors of nothing uh, because they're a, a single man band. They're, they're running a business, but obviously everybody's a director of something. So they're a director of the self-employed. Um, with that, you have to bear that in mind. You don't want to be overselling yourself but you want to be selling yourself as quality. Good, clear audio is what people want. They want to understand you. They want to hear that you have spoken with a tone that is not boring, but has a little bit of climb and drop in it. So it's got a bit of depth to it, a bit of interest, but also it's very, very clear. They also want to know that your accent is very clear. Uh, so I would invest a bit of time in maybe having five to ten attempts and asking somebody else, what do you think? Because you may have put something there. Uh, this is how I ended up meeting my wife, was actually writing somebody's profile before on a dating summit. Um, the <laughs> the uh, text my friend used was sort of jokingly, you know, bubbly. But it doesn't work on dating sites. People write that stuff completely wrong. Um, very often, the, the best way to do it is actually have somebody else write about you. Because, you know, when these profiles go, write a bit about yourself. People go, I don't know. Um, and then you get that long pause. So... Well, he hadn't had any responses, so I turned around and said, we sat having a couple of beers on a Saturday afternoon. And I said to him, oh, well, let me have a look, I'll have a look. And the rest is history. He's been married nearly a decade now. Um, but the point is, rewriting it works. Doing the audio, getting other people to listen to it and go, that's a bit cheesy or whatever, means that you can get people to make sure you've done it right. Same with the video. My video is here. I know I'm not fantastic, but this is all stuff going out my head at the minute, which is why I like a whiteboard. Um, if I was doing a business presentation, I wouldn't be stood here in a t-shirt, for example, and I wouldn't be stood with this lighting. Although I do actually have quite a large light behind me here. Um, I would actually spend a bit more money on this, but I'm giving this free. <laughs> so, um, just, Bear that in mind, it's all to do with what you're actually doing. Um, your profile pic, don't put a picture of a cat or something. You actually want to be presenting yourself as I'm a professional person or I'm teaching under under 10s or under 8s with a puppet. I do TESOL teaching English with a puppet. doesn't really matter. You want to present yourself with whatever image is relevant to what you're actually doing. So we've got our video, we've got our audio, and then they ask for a little bit of text. What are you going to teach? What are you going to teach? So, lessons. What are you going to teach? Gets back to the YouTube videos and why they're important, because that's your starting point. 
because when you start trying to make YouTube videos about English, you start to understand it's not as easy as it seems because you're trying to get a message across, but you don't know what the message is yet because you're the teacher. So that is why I say start with YouTube videos and putting a few things up. I've been doing synonyms and uh, homophones and other bits and pieces today, um, but they are more to do with the student I currently have, but also the fact that people can go and look at those as and when. It's becoming more of a Wikipedia rather than uh, a lesson focused direction. But what are you going to teach? Are you going to teach grammar? Are you going to teach pronunciation? Are you going to teach business English? How do you teach business English? How do you teach grammar? Watch some YouTube videos. See other people. See how they do it. Some of it I find really frustrating because I think they overcomplicate things. Because I am from an engineering background. As an engineer, I don't like chuff. I don't like excessive use of words. I don't like things that don't say what you need to be saying. A lot of the time, the YouTube videos are excessive. They're done in a way where a teacher is trying to explain a subject to a student as if they were the teacher. What do I mean? Gerunds, for example. Gerunds, I would simply say, is a verb with ing stuck on the end. That is a gerund. I would simply try and avoid putting gerunds into the lesson whatsoever as a subject to learn. I would, however, make a small YouTube video explaining what a gerund is that the students can review separately. Because I find that stuff is often too complicated. Um, but as I was saying, a lot of it is done for the wrong people because they've been taught a certain way by teachers teaching teachers then trying to transfer that knowledge to students and it's too complicated because if they understood that in the first place why be in your lesson simple question anyway i'm going to cut this off here but i just wanted to put these points across to get a few ideas back from you Put some comments and I know there's been a couple of people asked me how do they get started in this and that's how you get started now if you want to know how to set up a YouTube channel website school and all this I'm gonna to have to sit and do a load more videos on this I may end up as a course on its own on the website a free course as well and um, the more advanced stuff I may end up charging for simply because when it gets really complicated, there's money in it, and giving away this information for free will get you kick-started, but later on, when you start going, well, where do I get my lesson plans from, Matt? blah, 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 either you've got to think for yourself, or you start using my grey matter, and we start producing everything for you, and then we start feeding things to you. Um, there's multiple ways to do this, and... Some of this, like this, I don't mind doing, but when people start asking me about stuff they should already know, etc., I may start saying I have to charge for it, uh, purely because it's time consuming. I'm not talking mega bucks anyway, I'm just talking maybe putting a course together on how to set up your first website from here to here, um, maybe $5 or something. I'm not charging the earth, why? Because you want to get started now, and if you didn't need to get started now, um, you may be in one to two years, for example. You, the fact that you need to do it tells me that you very likely need this, some cash flow at the same time. So I won't overcharge on anything. Um, I'm not f for that. Education for me is important in the transition of information and knowledge from one person to another. Um, I find that doesn't transfer too well these days from my personal viewpoint. Um, too many people die with their information going with them, which is why I like transferring my knowledge that maybe when I am gone, that people still watch my videos. <laughs> Alright, thanks for watching.